Chapter 7, Ford's Folly Ford picked up the newspaper Mabel dropped on the floor and read it. He shook his head sadly. Poor Mabel. Dipper gave the slightest of smiles as he stared at Brad's mugshot. Stan, did you give that guy those two black eyes? Yeah, but in my opinion, he deserved much worse. Stan looked up the stairs Mabel had retreated to. We should go talk to her. Stan started to stand when the doorbell rang. They looked over to see Lazy Susan standing at the door. Ford opened the door for her, yes? Hello, uh, Ford, right? Lazy Susan asked. Where's Stan? We wanted to ask him how Mabel was doing, poor thing. Mabel is, uh, having some difficulty right now. Wait, we, uh... Ford looked behind her and saw that several people were also here to check on Mabel. A little Asian girl Ford recognized as Mabel's friend, Candy, came to the front of the crowd. How is Mabel? Does she need a shoulder to cry on? Tell her her friend Candy is here for her. I will just, uh... A larger girl, who Ford recognized as Mabel's other friend, Grenda, came up as well. Where is he? I'll punch his face, and then his balls, and then his face again, Grenda said, motioning the punching motion into her hand. The, uh, assailant, Brad, is, um, come on, man, tell us what's going on, said a goth-looking teen Ford identified as Robbie. I, she's, uh... Stan gave a sigh from behind his brother, whom he was watching become nervous speaking in front of a crowd like he did when he was young. He stepped up and put his hand on his shoulder. I'll take care of this, Sixer. You and Dipper go upstairs and talk to Mabel. Suddenly, the idea of speaking in front of a crowd didn't seem so nerve-wracking anymore, compared to speaking to Mabel when she's in such a fragile state. Stanley, you know I love this girl with all of my heart, but I... Ford was overcome with shame as he realized how little time he actually spent getting to know Mabel. He loved her more than anything, and that immense love blinded him to how little bonding they've actually had. How can a traumatized young girl be comforted by a neglectful uncle? I think it would be better if you go. I need to take care of this crowd. You're dying up here. Stan put his hand on Ford's shoulder. You're her family, too. She needs you. Ford took a deep breath. <sighs> You're right. I'll go with you, Ford. Ford gave a small smile, relieved that at least Dipper would be with him. They went upstairs only to find that Mabel wasn't in her room. Ford heard the distinct sound of loud running water from the restroom. It hadn't occurred to any of them that Mabel hadn't even had the chance to shower since the nightmare began. Ford gave a tender knock on the bathroom door. Mabel, honey, are you all right? Do you need anything? They became worried when Mabel didn't respond. Ford leaned an ear against the door and could hear muffled sobs. He was nervous, but he needed to check on her. He slowly opened the door and walked in with Dipper trailing behind him like a scared puppy. Mabel was curled up in the fetal position in the corner of the shower, still wearing her nightgown from last night. She was covered in soap, her face was red, and her eyes were redder. It was hard to tell where the water from the shower began and the natural tears ended. Why, why can't I feel clean? Mabel asked in a shaky voice as she scrubbed harder and harder. She was scrubbing so hard Ford was afraid she would hurt her skin. He gently took the soap from her hands, turned the water off, and wrapped her in a towel and lifted her out of the tub. She didn't resist, but she did sob harder. Shh, it's going to be okay, honey, Ford soothed as he rubbed her back. Dipper wrapped his arms around Mabel, silently crying along with his sister. Where's Grunkle Stan? Mabel asked. Ford had to admit his feelings were slightly hurt, that she preferred the comfort of his brother to him, but he couldn't blame her. He hadn't given her the attention he had given Dipper. It was easier to relate to Dipper due to their similar interests. 
What if Mabel mistook his shyness around her for favoritism? Stan is downstairs, honey, talking to all the people outside. Mabel had seen them all through the window. She ran into the bathroom in shame and tried to clean herself before anyone saw her. But she doesn't think she'll ever be clean. There are lots of people who want to make sure you're okay because they love you, Ford said as he put a firm hand on her shoulder. Don't they think I'm, you know, uh... Mabel began sobbing again, unable to make proper words. No, Ford said firmly despite his voice threatening to shake. No one thinks any less of you because of this, as no one should. Mabel calmed down a bit, but she began to shake from the coldness of her wet clothes. Ford used the towel to clean her face. Dipper, will you please bring me some dry clothes for her? Dipper nodded and went to retrieve clothes for Mabel. Ford, wanting to help his shivering niece get dry as quickly as possible, started to take off her wet clothes. Little did he realize that was a big mistake. Mabel let out a scream and smacked Ford's hands away. He stared at her completely dumbfounded. Mabel? Mabel stared at him with wide-eyed fear. She backed herself against the wall like a cornered animal cowering in fear from a hunter. Mabel, sweetheart, I would never hurt you, Ford said with a pleading expression. You know that, don't you? I would never hurt you. This was all too much for her to handle. Mabel ran past Ford out of the bathroom and past Dipper, who was walking down the hall with her new clothes. She went into the attic and locked the door behind her. Grungle Ford, what happened? Dipper asked, concerned. Ford couldn't answer him. He just stared, stunned at the door Mabel just went through. The way she looked at him, for a moment, she thought he was capable of hurting her. She thought he could be a monster like Brad. Go, go check on her, Dipper, Ford said, trying to steady his wavering voice. What about you? I think, um... Ford swallowed. I think it's best if she doesn't see me at the moment. Dipper, seeing how upset his uncle was at whatever just happened, didn't ask any more questions and went to knock on the door. Mabel? You okay? She didn't answer. Dipper tried to turn the doorknob. Unsurprisingly, it was locked. Dipper pulled out a pen from his vest and worked on picking the lock. Ford just stood there watching, feeling more helpless than ever. Dipper got the door open and went inside. A moment later, Ford heard him scream. Grungle Ford! Protective instincts kicked in as Ford bolted up the steps into the kid's bedroom. He was greeted by the sight of Dipper standing alone in an empty room looking at their now wide-open window. Dipper turned to Ford with a worried expression. Mabel's gone. Chapter 8 What's Lost is Found Ford wasted no time springing into action. He knew three things for certain. He knew that Mabel was in danger of getting seriously ill wearing wet clothes in the cold autumn air. He knew he had already failed Mabel as a great uncle and caretaker, and he knew he had to be the one to make this right again. Dipper, stay here and take care of everyone downstairs. Don't let them worry. I'll bring Mabel home. He shouted as he shimmied down the shack. He didn't know how Mabel managed to get down, as it was very difficult for him. He could only attribute it to her youth. He needed to have a word with Stan about making sure this place is made a little less convenient to escape. Mabel and Dipper were teenagers, after all. I need to come with you, Dipper shouted as he began climbing on the roof. No, Dipper, stay here. This is something I need to take care of myself, Ford said. He had to admit he wasn't sure what he was going to do when he found Mabel, but at that moment plans didn't matter. He just needed to make sure she was safe. He knew that he had been neglectful to her in the past, but now was as good a time as any to make it right. Once Ford was outside the shack, the direness of the situation really set in. 
He had on a sweater and a heavy coat, and he was still shivering in the early November air. He had to find Mabel and fast. But in order to find Mabel, he knew he would have to think like her. Okay, Ford, you can do this. What makes Mabel happy? Where would she go if she was upset? She likes unicorns. No, she told me they were jerks. She likes chasing butterflies. Oh, but they wouldn't be around at this time of year. Think, Ford, think, Ford narrated to himself. He walked around aimlessly for what felt like way too long, calling Mabel's name until his voice could barely make words anymore. He was getting more worried. As he walked, he played the events of the day over and over in his head. He didn't think he would ever get that image of Mabel cowering from him out of his mind. He couldn't blame her, though. He had taken a couple of psychology classes in his days. He was aware of the freeze, fight, or fly mentality of trauma victims. Still, he doubted she would have reacted that way if it were Stan. Probably because Stan had actually taken the time to get to know her. He sat under a large oak tree and sighed deeply. I've been a horrid uncle. No wonder she thought I was a monster. I haven't done anything to prove I'm not. Ford let a few tears slip, despite his best efforts not to. He then looked up at the golden sky and did something he hadn't done since he was a child. He prayed. I don't know if you are up there or which God you are, but please, please let me find my niece. I promise I'll never take her for granted again. I'll be a better uncle, a better... Ford was struck by an epiphany. Parent. Right after their parents died, it had been decided that the kids would come live in Gravity Falls. But they couldn't bear to leave their parents' graves in California. So Ford and Stan had them buried in Gravity Falls where the kids could visit. Ford made a mad dash for the Gravity Falls Cemetery. He spotted the two newest-looking gravestones that said Pines. Sure enough, curled up beside the gravestones was a small, shivering lump. Ford had never been so relieved to see someone shiver in his life. It showed that Mabel was still with him, but her chapped lips were turning a bluish color. He didn't have long to act. Mabel? Ford approached slowly, not wanting to scare her again. Mabel looked up at him with half-open eyes. Ford knelt by her side and put his hand on her face. Mabel? Drunkle Ford, Drunkle Ford, I'm so, so sorry. Shh, it's no, sweetie, don't. It's a, don't, it's okay. Ford scooped her up and held her against his chest. He nestled her into his coat, hoping that along with his body heat will keep her warm. He immediately set off for home. Mabel coughed violently but was still trying to get out an apology. Uncle Ford, I'm so sorry. I was scared. Shh, I know, Mabel. It's not your fault. It's mine. I should have been more mindful. Ford held her tighter. I know I haven't been the best guardian, but I promise that will change. Mabel was about to open her mouth to protest Ford's claim that he's been anything but a blessing after losing her parents, but was promptly cut off. You need to rest now, honey. You're safe. I've got you. Mabel gave a small smile and snuggled against his chest. Her hand curled into his sweater, feeling safe and warm. Uncle Ford? Yes, sweetheart? I'm glad you're here. Ford looked down at the adorable sight and moved to tears. This girl, whom he had seen run away in fear of him, was now quietly resting in his arms, trusting him to take care of her and protect her. Me too, pumpkin. Chapter 9 Closing the Gap By the time Ford arrived at the shack, all the guests had left. Ford was glad Stan and Dipper had gotten rid of them. He was grateful that the town was rallying behind Mabel in her time of need. But right now, Mabel was in no condition to put up with visitors. 
When they entered the shack, Stan and Dipper were waiting for him. Sixer, thank God. I was so worried, Stan said as he glanced at the drowsy girl resting in his brother's arms. Uncle Stan, I'm, I'm sorry I ran away. I got scared and I... Uh... Mabel tried to explain in between coughs. She wanted to tell Stan everything, how dirty she had felt, how she had gone to the cemetery because she missed her parents, and how awful she had treated Grunkle Ford. Before she could say another word, Stan gently lifted her from Ford's arms and gathered her in a tight hug. Stan's embrace eroded any desire to explain herself. All she could give was a hum of contentment as she let herself get lost in Stan's loving embrace. For the first time since the nightmare began, she felt happy, happy to be safe in the arms of her family. Let's get you out of those wet clothes. Dipper had already set out pajamas and plenty of blankets. Stan had even started a small fire for her in the fireplace. Mabel excused herself to the bathroom to change. She regretted what she had done to Ford earlier, but all the same, she wasn't comfortable with anyone helping with the intimate act of changing her clothes. Ford gave an understanding smile, indicating he felt no offense and wanted to respect her privacy. When she emerged in her dry jammies, the whole family was settled around Stan's old armchair. Stan in the seat, Dipper on one of the arms, Ford leaning against the side. She always had a special fondness for that chair. So many happy memories were made there. Perhaps a few scary memories, too, but the chair was always there. It was a perfect symbol for the Pines family. Small, worn out, and not perfect by any stretch but it was always there when you needed it. Stan motioned for Mabel to come sit on his lap. Mabel happily obliged. Stan and Ford wrapped her up in a couple of blankets Dipper brought for her. She was content in her warm and cozy cocoon. I want to show you something, sweetie. Stan grabbed a pile of cards that was on the table next to him and showed them to Mabel. What are these? she asked. The people that came to visit left these for you. Mabel was a little nervous about reading what messages her friends left her, still afraid they would express disgust with her. She took a deep breath and began to read. Mabel, what Brad did to you was sick and wrong. I can't imagine what you must be going through. I know being the only girl in a family of guys can be frustrating. If you ever need some girl talk, or whatever, you know how to reach me. Love, Wendy. Mabel, you are the nicest girl I've ever met. You did not deserve to have something so horrible happen to you. I just want you to know that you're my best friend and I will be here with you. Love, Candy. I'll kill him. I'll kill that Brad guy and then I'll bring him back to life just so I can punch him over and over again until he's dead. I watch Duck Detective, so I know how to make it look like an accident. Love, Brenda. Mabel, that was totally messed up what Brad did to you. Don't let what he did get to you. He's always been the kind of guy who likes making other people feel bad so he can feel better about himself. You're not like that, though. You always want to make people feel good about themselves. Like you did for me when I was getting over Wendy and started dating Tambry. You healed my broken heart. And if you need me to, I'll try to heal yours. Hey, that would make some great song lyrics. Stay awesome, Robbie. Card after card contained nothing but supportive, heartfelt messages from the residents of Gravity Falls. By the time she finished the last card, she was wiping her eyes and sniffing loudly. She smiled at her family. Their spirits were lifted seeing Mabel look like herself again, with eyes that sparkled and an infectious smile that seemed to glow. That's when they knew that even though they had a long road ahead, Mabel would get through this. They shared a few more smiles and laughs together until Mabel began coughing again. Stan instinctively wrapped her blankets more tightly around her and said, All right, I think it's time we all hit the hay. Agreed, said Ford. And I think it would be best if you stayed home from school tomorrow. I'll stay home too. A dipper, you'll ruin your perfect attendance. Mabel knew how much getting perfect attendance meant to Dipper. He's gotten a perfect attendance since kindergarten. Cold, flu, stomachache. None of that was enough to keep Dipper away. 
He had always dreamed of getting perfect attendance every year until he graduated high school. Nah, you're more important. Aw, bro, bro, it's okay. Go to school, I'll be fine. But... Besides, I'll need you to tell me what I missed so I don't fall too far behind. Mabel... Please, Dipper. She looked at him with a pleading expression. If you ruin your perfect attendance, it'll just make me feel worse. Dipper looked at Stan and Ford for help, but they both just shrugged. Dipper sighed. Are you sure you'll be okay? Promise. Mabel crossed her heart. Of course, you can always be a good brother and do my homework for me, she said with a playful grin, attempting to lighten Dipper's mood. It seemed to have worked as Dipper let out a chuckle and playfully shoved her. Ha ha ha. You're not getting off that easily, sis. Okay, then, Dipper, if you're going to school tomorrow, you need to get some sleep, said Ford. You need to get some sleep, too, Mabel. You want to bunk in my room again? Or sleep in your own room, or, or what? Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, is it okay if I stay down here by the fire? You know, it can be kind of cold upstairs. Mabel had an ulterior motive for wanting to stay by the fire. She didn't want to sleep in a dark room. Sure, if that's what you want. You want me to stay with you? Mabel then said something that shocked all three of them. Actually, I was wondering, Grumpel Ford, will you stay with me tonight? Ford didn't know what to say. When the day had begun, Mabel was afraid to let him touch her. Now she trusted him enough to stay with her and protect her while she slept. He was so moved that he had to hold back tears. Of course I will, Pumpkin. Stan and Dipper each gave Mabel a hug and kiss goodnight before heading upstairs. Ford sat down in the chair and opened his arms for Mabel to come onto his lap. Mabel laid her head on Ford's chest. Ford began stroking her hair. The soothing gesture was putting Mabel to sleep even faster. Her eyes fluttered with each caress until she finally surrendered to a peaceful slumber. For a while, Ford simply watched her sleep. He continued stroking her hair despite the fact she was no longer awake to feel it. He was doing it more for himself now than for her. Watching her sleep let him glimpse the innocence that he feared was lost forever when Brad attacked her. Ford realized that Mabel could have lost much more than her innocence. She knew who Brad was. He hadn't covered his face when he attacked her and would have left behind a witness. That meant that more than likely, Brad hadn't intended on letting her live. Ford held Mabel tighter, trying to banish that horrible thought from his mind. Mabel was with him. Mabel was safe. In that moment, he made a vow. He said it quietly, but still with steadfast conviction. I'll always protect you, Mabel. He hadn't expected a reply, but apparently Mabel wasn't sleeping as soundly as he thought, for she gave a small smile and whispered, I know. Ford smiled and kissed the top of her head. He made sure blankets were tucked tightly around her before closing his own eyes. As the two lay close to each other in front of the warm fire, the flicker of the flames melted away the emotional distance between them. 